Hey, what's going on? It's Eli. Today we're gonna be doing a little tutorial. I'm gonna be showing you how to make a two chunk perma loader. Uh, this can be used to load two chunks in your world, no matter what. Any two chunk area this will work on, and you can also uh, make this design in a modular fashion so you can have grids of chunks loaded as well. All right, so the first thing we're gonna need to talk about is the materials you're gonna need, since I'm doing this in sort of a tutorial fashion here. So here are your materials. Um, really cheap. This block can be whatever you want because this is an item chunk loader. You can use whatever item you want. All right, because I care about the knowledge you guys have, I'm going to be telling you how this works. So essentially when an item passes through a nether portal, it loads the chunk that that nether portal is in for 15 seconds. So if I click F3G, we can see this is the chunk we're in right now and this nether portal is in that chunk. So every time that diamond block passes through that portal, it loads this chunk for 15 seconds and the chunk in the nether for 15 seconds. Um, so basically what we're doing here is once the item comes through the portal, it gets funneled into this bottom dropper through that hopper minecart and the item gets shot up through here and dispensed out through the top and into the portal and then it goes into the exact same version in the nether and it just keeps redoing that process uh, permanently loading those chunks. All right, now for my favorite part, I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to build this. So the first thing you need to do is you need to find the two chunks you want loaded. Uh, so F3G, let's bring up those chunks. And we're going to place the center of the nether portal in between two chunks here. Uh, so let's build up the nether portal really quickly. So let's grab some red concrete and some obsidian here. Um, it's good to use the default size nether portal in this instance. So now we can start with the more redstoning part of this. So let's grab some white concrete. So you're going to move down uh, a couple blocks here, two to be specific. Uh, and you're going to go one, two, three, all of those droppers are facing up, and then one facing into the portal itself. All right, now to handle the item collection, we're going to grab two hoppers, and we're going to place the first hopper going into the bottom dropper, and then this hopper going into the hopper we just placed, and then two powered rails. And then we're going to place two blocks to stop our hopper minecart from getting off those tracks. We're going to power those rails. Um, you're going to want to do this over on this side. Uh, then we're going to place down our hopper minecart. This is going to be thing, the thing that collects the item through the portal. All right, now for the wiring part, let's put a concrete block down here. We're going to grab a comparator. Uh, this comparator is going to detect the item once it gets into this bottom dropper. Uh, and then it's going to power this block up here. We're going to put some redstone dust on top of this block. And then we're going to grab an observer. Uh, this observer is going to detect a change in state of this redstone block and it's going to fire signal back into this dropper and then we're going to have another observer facing into that redstone dust that's also going to detect the change and then we're going to put a piece of redstone dust on top and then another observer that's firing into the dropper on top uh, so whenever we put an item down here this will fire a little chain that shoots the item up so as you can see let's put a comparator down here it shoots it up through the top uh, top dropper up there all right so uh, there is a good way to lock this as well. If you put a lever on here and you lock it, whenever an item makes its way into this bottom dropper, it's no longer going to be fired up. So that's a little off and on switch for a two chunk loader. So now let's light this portal and go through it. All right, so I ended up clearing some space and doing the exact same thing on the other side. The one on this side does not need to be in two chunks, and this the chunk it's in is not important unless you're trying to load somebody in the nether. So you can pretty much ignore that. Uh, you can see it's the exact same design we built on the other side. It's identical. But once this side's complete, it's going to be easier if you block it off. So let's grab some glass or any other material for that matter. Um, and we can block it off a little bit just where the hopper dispenses the item right here. Just put a block in front of that. It makes it much easier. Uh, you can block off the whole thing too if you have another portal nearby. So now we're done with the building part. Uh, let's turn off chunk borders really quick. We can put any item in this bottom dropper over here. We can use a rail. Let's turn off our off switch, and then we can watch the chunks being loaded. So you can see the items traveling through. 
At this point, if you want to be safe, you can cover up the portal. It's not really necessary, but um, if the server is slow, once again, it might be helpful. So you can see the item is constantly being dispensed, and both of these chunks are currently being loaded. So if we fly away super far into another part of the world where these chunks would normally have been unloaded, they're going to stay loaded. So that's great. We've just built a two-chunk loader. And if you want, you could have just kept repeating this pattern out and out, loading different grids of chunks. The only thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to calculate the position of the portals in the nether because you need to make sure they don't link to the same portal. In terms of the use case for these chunk loaders, uh, they have a lot of uses, but the two big ones are loading the uh, area where you're duping falling entities through an end portal, and also loading the chunks that your storage system is going to be using, whether that's a multi-item sorter or a single item sorter. They usually take a while, so you want to load them while you're away. It makes them much more effective. Uh, they cannot be used to load farmland or anything else that requires random tick. Uh, the player has to be within a certain range of blocks that require a random tick base to grow. So this will not work for loading like a carrot farm, for example. All right, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching this short little video on chunk loading. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you thought this content was at all worth watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.